Hi guys, just coming back from a weekend camping here in the south of Portugal. We went to Costa Vicentina. Costa Vicentina, it's a, it's a lovely area. For me, one of the best, uh, most beautiful areas in Portugal, in the, in the west coast south. We went there camping for a couple of days, me and my, my, my buddy Manuel. And I just wanted to show you the setup that I'm using in the bike, either for a weekend camping, either for a week or either for a month. It's just going to be exactly the same setup as I as I traveled already with uh, with this bike for nine days, ten days, and the things that I'm carrying with are exactly the same. I travel ultra lightweight with the KTM 500 here, 2020. First time that I traveled with the Moscomoto Reckless 40 version 3. I used Kriega before. But the gear that I have inside is exactly the same and I'm just going to show you what I'm taking with me. Well, first, just a quick introduction about the about, about my front, about the, the way I I have my bars in here. I like I like to I like to have the the naked front. I don't like towers very much. I had a tower on a 690 on a KTM 690. I downsized from the KTM 690 to this one. It was the better choice I could ever make. I'm totally happy because my preference is just dirt, 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 dirt. Having the most fun out of dirt as I can. And with the 690, uh, well, I was more, it was better on the road, that's for sure. I could do 140 kilometers per hour, 150 kilometers per hour on the road. Not with this, at least with the stock uh, transmission that I like to take. But on dirt tracks, the 690, well, it's already like going into the level of a light trail bike. And this one is a totally enduro bike. That's what I love. I just love to travel like that. So for the moment, I'm not placing a tower. I already considered it. I already considered the Nomad, a Red Garage, or the Aurora Light Kit. Also considered the um, Britannia Composites, the guys from Canada, that it's basically the same mask but a bit, a bit bigger, and the, with a windscreen that you can uh, place higher or lower. It's nice because it has a nice dash. Um, I bought now from Mike Spurgeon from Takumoto, I bought some heated grips. I bought some, uh, what do I bought more for here? Uh, I have some keys to install, okay. I have some voltmeter and USB charger to install also. And probably I will need some more space in the dash in here. So maybe I can go with the Britannia Composites or just with, with one of those, I don't know, how is it, Motomind? There's some solution uh, about dash in here that you can place things and place this, the clock a bit higher. I don't know, I'm just going careful about that uh, extra stuff in here because I prefer to keep the bike as stock as possible. Otherwise, when I realize I'm just turning this into a, into a mini trail bike and I don't want that. I really don't want that. I need more gas, that's, that's for sure. This is the stock tank. I ordered the IMS 4.5 from Takomoto. Also ordered the Seat Concepts, the, the Comfort regular one. I haven't arrived yet, this is the stock one. Not bad, uh, not bad for me. Already did days of 300 kilometers, 305. Bah, no big deal. 
As far as you are entertained on dirt tracks, no big problem. Uh, I avoid uh, roads as much as I can. And yeah, that's my front. I, 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 I have some rim out in here for the GoPro. I use the GoPro filming me to have a nice perspective, filming the, f the, the front also. Sometimes I put in here some extra poles, metal poles, and this gives me like almost a, a closed drone perspective. Like if the drone was really following me, it's nice with the 360 GoPro. The Montana 700i, I'm a big fan of Garmin. I'm coming from the 680 before this one. The 680 has like, I don't know, 10 years and it's still running and it's still uh, an upgrade, an upgraded um, uh, the machine. I mean, it's, 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 it's a machine that I can still use it. So I'm really fan of Garmin. Uh, there are some tablet solutions around there. There's this Portuguese guy, João Pereira, from the Drive Mode Dashboard. I'm really curious to use the Drive Mode Dashboard with the Carpe Eater solution. The main thing that I see, the main advantage would be not having to take my hand from the bars to do the zoom in and zoom out and move the map and being able to control from here. That, that should be a great upgrade, but well, I don't know. Uh, I prefer reliability more than everything else. I travel with Montana for, I don't know, 20 years now. I started with the first uh, 62, wasn't it? 62 CX, I think. It was not even CX, the first one. Um, and well, the, Mon the, the, the Montanas never, the Montanas or the Garmin's, never failed on me. This one is nice because you can connect with the, with the Fenix 6. You can download Wikilog tracks directly from here without needing your phone. So nice stuff. This is my front. I'm going to keep it like that for the moment. The bike has the bike has 100 and is this focusing? Okay, the bike has 105 hours, more or less, and 2,000 kilometers. Uh, from the beginning that I bought it, I'm considering these upgrades of the Carpe Eater or the, the front tower. Uh, I'm just good for the moment. I'm not buying that for the moment. Uh, as I said, I just want to keep this with the most enduro feeling possible. I prefer to travel slowly, less kilometers by day. I don't have any timeline. I don't have any schedules. The idea of this bike is to do the trans -Euro Trail by stages. When I reach the end of the trans -Euro Trail in the Balkans or in Turkey or whatever, my idea is to follow up to the Easterns, then to Mongolia, but just doing that with uh, no plans, leaving the bike in safe places in between. She is here because of the COVID. I already started uh, uh, some first legs on the North Spain until the Pyrenees with the bike. I dropped her very safely almost for a year at Mas Clodan Guardia. Mas Clodan Guardia. You should search for that. Any guys riding the East Pyrenees, that's a lovely point to stay. The Bratherton's family is going to take care of you. Chris, hi Chris. It's really a fellow guy now that stored and took care of my bike for an entire year. And the idea is just that, that the bike travels with me for a week, a couple of weeks, and I store it at some safe place. I return home by plane or whatever, and then pick her again. So let's get to business. Uh, the idea of this, of this video is to show you everything that I have in here. 
And I, when I mean everything, is things that I pack for a weekend or for a month. It's just the same. I don't need anything more than in here, either for two days, either for 30 days. So, starting from the beginning, in this Molly two liters pouch here, I have uh, a tri my tripod. Okay, I like to film, I like to photograph in an amateur perspective. Okay, I'm not a pro. This tripod is the Kuhlman Neo Max 260. It was the lightest one I could find with quality. I mean, there are some more lightest one for sure, but maybe not with quality. I'm happy with this. Pretty simple to install. For me, the tripods or the camera gears, it's something that must be really handy. It's something that you can take from the bike in five seconds. Otherwise, otherwise you're just not taking it. When you are going in that dirt section that you are really enjoying the section, you don't, you don't want to stop, but you just see that perspective that would be great. You just feel that you need to do a quick stop to, to take the shot or to make the video. It's something that must be really handy, like two seconds, pam, pam. Otherwise, if it's at the bottom of a bag, if you need to take everything else before, you're just not recording, you're just not taking the shot. So, the first thing was the tripod here. Let's put the camera on the tripod now. Now, this is my camping area. The left side is my camping area. Then this is my kitchen area, share. And this is my hotel area. I mean, civilized clothes and things like that. In here, there's a spare mole, two liters with nothing inside, in case I need to carry something in here, an extra bottle, trash, whatever. Tools in here, tools in here. And let's start for the camping here and what do I take with me? Well, let me tell you first that this Reckless 40 version 3 touches perfection, okay? Uh, we must be careful about talking about perfection because perfection is a thing very difficult to reach. But, well, this is 95 perfect. Uh, I'm just going to talk to you about the things that uh, don't make it being 100%. Sorry, Moscow guys, I know that you lost a lot of time developing this. Uh, well, let's talk about that just right now, otherwise I can forget later. Uh, I know that you lost a lot of hours developing this. All my respect for that, okay? Totally happy with this. I love the bags. You did a great job. I was pretty in doubt about changing for this because I spent a lot of money with the Kriegas that I had for three years. But I don't regret, totally happy. The thing doesn't move. It's well uh, divided in compartments. It has everything that I need. Perfect. What, well, almost perfect. What could be to reach the perfection? This. Lo this last part of the straps uh, may get loose easily. I know that I should have cut this before. I'm just, I, I didn't touch anything. It's just bare stock as it arrived to me. I should cut by here probably. Uh, but if you roll all this strap in a stock way as it is, if you don't press this really, really good, this thing goes loose. It almost went out on the chain, went in the chain, I mean, uh, it's not a good thing. Maybe, I don't know, in a humble suggestion, maybe this being elastic, maybe this being the 3M uh, Velcro that is much stronger, 
maybe this being a rubber, I don't know, something like that, because it's, it happened to me twice, in this side and on the other side. If you don't roll this and, and compress really hard, this thing gets lost. The other thing that I would include on the 5% uh, that is missing to reach the 100% is that this should be more rubberized. Okay, at least for my usage, I, I, I love to go along uh, hiker tracks. We search for hiking tracks. We love doing single tracks, so we touch and scratch on rocks a lot, on trees. We pass a lot by places where there should be only one person going. So this has two, two days and a half of usage and uh, the fabrics is already a bit scratched. It's not damaged, but I would definitely prefer a lot more rubber in here for my usage. Okay, camping with the camping gear. So th this, these are the, the, the two main things that for the moment, this is not a long-term review. I only use this two days and a half. Lovely. Uh, I'll do a long-term review after one year and so, and then we'll see what misses more for the perfection for the moment. It's just that couple of things. Everything else is just perfect. So, what do I take for camping gear? Headlight for the head. This is a pencil solution with 300 lumens, I think, 250, 300, something like that. Then I have the, the personal cleaning things, to toothbrush, uh, shower and shampoo in, in one size little bottle. I mean, they, they, they do the both options. Um, so I like to carry a pair of uh, cleaning towels for my eyes when you're camping and not showering at the end of the day and you're camping on a beach your eyes are just full of dirt I just take a couple of these things sometimes I just forget to use them but well some Voltaren or pain medicines in case you just have a toothache or something like that uh, the other end. Ah, this is the the little kit to wash my clothes. I just carry two pair of socks, two pair of boxers. While I'm using one, I'm washing the other one. I mean, I I wash one of them at the end of the day, and it keeps drying in the motorbike with a with an harness or something or with a strap. And this is more than enough for a week because you use just a small part of this, it's a lot of bubbles. So I use this for an entire week and it could last even for more than, than a week. What else on the camping side? Uh, audio system from JBL. This is like a weatherproof system. Uh, my kid just lent me this. Thank you, Francisco. This is from him. I was pretty much in doubt about taking this. I before we we departure, I just asked my buddy, "Shall we take this?" Because I really like to travel ultra lightweight. Everything that I don't need, I don't take with me, and this is a, an extra thing that well, I thought I wouldn't need. Uh, I, I really don't need to ride and to eat and to sleep. But he said, yeah, let's take it, let's try. And now I have a totally different perspective. I wouldn't pass without this, period. Uh, camping with this by the sunset, having a bottle of wine, hearing some good music, waking up in the morning with some cheerful music. It just makes all the difference, all the difference. And because I'm traveling with this bag with 30, 35% of space free, 
I could carry that uh, with no problem. That's, an, that's another interesting thing. I never, never travel with 100%. This bag 100% would come like in here, okay? Like just a, a first roll. And I do like five rolls, five or six. So there's almost 30% at least of spare space. I like to travel like that. That way you just pack in the morning really quickly. You don't have to do a Tetris system, like everything packed on the proper way. Otherwise you can't, you can't do it. I hate that. Uh, so I really like to travel with some spare space. Maybe you're just buying an extra jacket that you saw some, uh, a t-shirt from the place that you are visiting or whatever, or you just decided to buy a big bread that you're not expecting. So I like to have an extra space in here. Well, following with the camping gear, this is my down kilt. I don't use sleeping bag. I use the Sea to Summit Amber AB. It's an 80, 50 um, fill of feathers and it's a down kilt. With this, I can't, I, I can't move freely inside uh, under this, okay? It's not inside because this has a straps. This has some straps that go under the mat and you're sleeping like if you have a, a blanket, like a feather blanket, okay? You can move inside from one side to the other. Like if, if you were at home, it's, it's, it's really nice. With, with the sleeping bag, when you move, uh, it just came out of, of the place that you want. Then the part from your, that covers your head, it, it's just always on the wrong position. Uh, it just feel like a mummy inside, a uh, mummified person inside. I really don't like it. So I tried this for the first time uh, two years ago. I'm really happy with it. It compresses a lot. It's really comfortable. We had some chilly nights this, uh, this weekend. And even though I had some cold, uh, it was not my most comfortable nights, but even though uh, I could sleep. So from early spring to downfall, this Ember AB, um, it's a nice solution. See to Summit, I'm a big fan of this brand. Everything that they do, they do well. Now going to the mat. This mat is the C2 Summit Etherlight XT, regular one. It's 180 centimeters, I measure 175. This has a clever solution that you fill it with a bag. You don't need to blow inside and fill it with a lot of humidity from your lungs. Um, you just have a, a bag that you roll, it fills from air and in six or seven times you, you fill this. There are more ultra lightweight mats for sure. Even C2 Summit they have the, I think it's the ultra air something. It's like half of the pack of this totally or even less than half. But it's really thin. It doesn't isol isolate you from the ground uh, as, it, as, I, as I want to, because when you're cold, most of the situations is because you're not well isolated from the ground. You can use a, 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 how do you say, you can use a sleeping bag to be in the Everest for minus 40 degrees Celsius, uh, that if you're not well isolated from the ground, isolated from the ground, you're just going to be cold anyway. So there's always a compromise between um, weight, volume, and comfort. With a down kilt, you sleep directly over this, okay? You don't have shit. Your, your, your skin is directly over this, and this other light has a feeling that doesn't bother you. Uh, you don't get any moisture, you don't sweat on the plastic. It's just comfortable. It's not like a cotton sheet, but it's just comfortable. The ultra lightweight, uh, the, air, the ultra air one, I don't remember the name, it's a yellow one. I touched it, I felt it on a shop, 
and it just felt like plastic it made a lot of noise like so i didn't like i'm totally happy with this c2 summit Etherlite xt regular it's thick i think it's it's the thickest one in the ultralight uh, level from c2 summit what else c2 summit airlight towel xl again the same situation they have towels like half the size of this but when you're going to dry yourself you feel like you have an handkerchief for drying you so this towel is pretty big it has 21 cross 52 inches that's 54 cross 132 centimeters it's more than enough for you to have a comfortable dry it's really small you can compact this even more it's totally light so nice solution for me of course these are uh, personal preference each one has his own peripheral uh, personal preferences another C2 Summit solution it's the Aeros pillow premium regular again there are lighter pillows smaller pillows uh, but not with this uh, comfortable cotton feeling that you can have in your in your face I really like this model of course it's uh, an inflatable pillow you can't expect to be your home pillow but you don't feel like sleeping over your kids uh, toy boy or, uh, or an aquatic boy is it's, it's nice uh, it's nice you can you could make it thicker you could make it thin if you blow it uh, more or less inside I like this piece of gear totally comfortable never failed on me never got punched then this is the Nordisk Lofoten one person ultralight tent this is the most ultralight tent that I found when I bought it two years ago maybe there's a lighter one now but I don't need anything else I'm totally happy with it it weights 490 grams uh, it's amazing our uh, tent can be so light you can almost put this in the side pocket of your pants of course that you can't sit inside uh, you can't stand inside for sure but you don't feel claustrophobic inside you feel nice if there is a lot of humidity like we got this weekend the the first skin the first mesh skin of the tent before the second uh, waterproof skin the first skin got some moisture got some drops which is not good uh, because they are very close as being so ultra lightweight but uh, well it was almost extreme conditions about humidity I never had that before so I'm happy with the tent for the moment you can have it in, in two situations you can have it with the waterproof layer or in a hot night in Africa you can take the, the waterproof layer from the outside and just have the inside with the, with the net like to be totally fresh this is the pole these, these are the poles for the for the tent okay the poles and the main uh, um, that that makes the structure of the structure of the tent I never carry them together okay this bag is supposed to carry everything together like this I prefer not to connect so much these metal parts with this because everything is uh, frictioning a lot on dirt rides isn't it it's just like that all the time even though it's totally packed and compressed in there there's a lot of uh, touching so I prefer to carry the poles in this this is just like a, a shoe bag that it has some thickness and it protects me a bit never had problems with the tent I used it already a lot so totally happy with it then the bag 
comes out easily. It comes out and it gets in really easy. They made in this version 3, they just made this, they just made this strap that you can lose or tight. So you can lose it to carry the bag and then you just tied it. Okay. Now let's pass along to the kitchen. Well, this bottle is, is from home here, but we carry another one just similar. You can totally rely on this, totally. We did some dirt tracks, a bit some hard ones. Uh, the, the, the bikes fell, uh, no problem, never happened and anything in here, these straps, you can even lose, the, you, can, you can even let these parts get it being loose, that it won't bother with anything, even though I usually put this in here, so it just goes a bit more neat. And let me show you the, the kitchen section of my bike. I call it this kitchen section because when we stop for lunch I don't need to touch the other bags. I just need to open this, stick this and with this bag I have everything in here that I need for a lunch. Okay, so I have the share. This is an Elinox share that goes in here. Illinox 01 okay and then in here I have the I have the Opinel this is a French brand Opinel where is where, where is the camera okay okay this is an Opinel knife French one really nice uh, where is the rest of my things that fell in here somewhere? Yeah, okay, just spoon, knife and fork. I prefer metal gear, I don't like the plastic filling. I'm happy with this, no problems, doesn't take too much space. There's still some bread from Alentejo in here. I like to take fruit in this bag, like the kids' fruit. Uh, the fruit makes me that the, the tiring feeling goes along, goes 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 away. Uh, just keeps me going and going with no problem. Being well hydrated and having some fruit, I think it's something that is good for the muscles, for the junctions. So I always take uh, some things from these kids' fruits with me. Protein bars. Chocolate candies for the dessert. Bolognese uh, dry food. Some more calories. Some coffee and protein uh, bags for the for the how do you say it? for the for the breakfast. And here's the stove. This is the M uh, MSR. Is this focused? Yeah, same as our uh, kit, okay, with the, with the pan and the stove. When I bought the stove, this solution was the more expensive one because of having this, this click thing, okay, you don't need a, a lighter. I thought it was a fancy thing, like What's the big deal about getting the lighter? No problem. But now after using it for a long time, I must tell you that this is really comfortable to have this. You just don't need to pick the light. It's just ready to use. So I'm totally um, happy with this stove. I don't remember the name, sorry. But you can try to find, I think is the the most lightweight and, the, and the, better, the best one from MSR. And that's it. 
With a stinger it, I can carry enough food for two or three days for two persons with no need to go to a supermarket, which is nice because if you are on the, on the wild side, uh, camping, you can, you can be not worried with the supermarket. We were camping two days, riding two days and a half, and we just went to the supermarket to fresh water, nothing else. And we were wild camping also, so this is the perfect size for me. It's just lovely that the share goes in here, it just doesn't move. Uh, I don't have to be afraid riding that the share will fall, no problem at all. When I stop for lunch, it's just taking the kitchen off and it's pretty practical. Now let's move to the hotel side part. So I take all the all the chargers. This is a four entry USB charger to charge everything. I'm going to show you after what is inside that Turatec uh, tank bag over there. All the things that I use to record videos and photos. And this is what I carry. This is the drone battery. This is the dock chargers for the GoPros, the two of them. Uh, more drone batteries. Then a fisherman shirt. I just love this material. This kind of fisherman shirt. It goes comfortable from chilly mornings until uh, not so chilly evenings. Uh, coping well with the middle of the day when it's hotter. Uh, it, you can open the shirt, close the shirt, you can put a buff over it. This is the piece of gear that I prefer to take with me. It never gets wrinkled. Uh, it dries fast if you wet it. It's really comfortable. Uh, it looks good. You can be with this wherever, either camping, either in a more fancy place. Well, I usually don't go to, to fancy places when I'm riding the bike, but basically this is comfortable and can make you comfortable with a big uh, variety of weather conditions. Then I take two first layers, okay? A first thermic layer uh, for colder situations. This one is from Protest. I love this brand. I think it's a Spanish brand. I have layers for ski from Under Armour, North Face, Eliansen, uh, Millet, I don't know, well, I don't know, I have eight or ten, or ten um, la under layers. And this one is the cheapest one that I have and is the one that I prefer. It's really thin, it's really, you can sweat and you, you don't get moisture. It's a really nice piece of gear. I never, never travel without this. If you are cold at night, you just use it. If you are cold during the day, it occupies almost no space at all. You can compress, so it's a lovely piece of gear. Then the second layer is a more fresh one, not so cold. It has like a, a net. You can breathe better with this. Sometimes I use both if it's too cold, sometimes I just use this. So same situation. What else? A pair of socks, wool socks, because my sneakers are very light and fresh. So I take wool material on the socks because the wool makes you comfortable if it's cold, but doesn't make you sweat so much if it's hot. A pair of uh, Nike running under trousers, okay, if it's cold when you're riding the bike, you can place this under your trousers. If it's not, and it's cold by night, which happens a lot, you can sleep with this. I mean, I don't, I don't carry pajamas with me, I just sleep with the thermic layers. What else? This is a pair of uh, motorbike socks from Klim. 
the thinnest one for hot days and then I have some other ones for cold days. I carry two pair of socks, some thick ones and some thin ones and I use them uh, according to the day. While I use one of them, I'm, I've, been watch, I've been washing the other ones and uh, they just go they just go drying on the on the bike. This is the other pair of socks. These are used. This is the bag where I place the where I place the used where I place the, 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 the used clothes. This bag is very clever, City Summit again, because it can go on a vacuum system without having any valve. This under part makes valve itself. Look at this. Just let me go inside so you can. So the bag is totally low. And when you start compressing, the under part, the yellow one, the orange one, just starts doing a valve system, you see? You see? And that's it. You have this bag totally compressed. I take my used clothes in here so it won't contaminate the other clothes. Uh, if you need a dry bag for something, if you go hiking or whatever, if you decide to go, I don't know, swimming or crossing a river, you need a dry bag. It's also useful to have one. So, amazing piece of gear. It's Sea to Summit. Event, EVAC, 8 liters. What else on the hotel side? A pair of trousers. Well, regular ones. And the most liked sneakers that I could find on the market. These ones were from the gym and now I just use them to travel with the motorbike. These are the Nike 5.0 Free. Why free? Because it's just that kind of sneakers that it's like a sock, you see? They don't have any sturdy material anywhere. You can just compress this all the way down. They weight nothing. They are a bit, a bit fresh. Uh, this, this fabric here is a bit fresh, a lot sweatable. Can you say sweatable? Well, you can sweat a lot in here without having any problem. But with the wool socks, I don't have any, any problem with this. They are not the most beautiful sneakers when you are in a bar around the city. I know that probably I should have some, something more fashion, but I don't want to. Uh, I privilege the ultra lightweight things, so Totally happy with these sneakers. Again, all fits in here and with the same perspective of not being totally uh, full. So the same thing with the dry bag of having 30-35% spare, it applies to this uh, hotel side bag, okay? Now let's go to the tools. So in this side, I carry a disc protection alarm. This thing is incredible. You just close it. It should warn that it's ready to ready to work. When you close it, it makes a sign. saying that he's ready to work. If this was on the bike, and if someone tries to move the bike, just look at the noise. Wow. It's better than some, it's better than some house alarms. It's just amazing. This is from Covix. It's pretty, uh, uh, well, I, I wouldn't say lightweight, it's not exactly lightweight, of course, because it's a locker, 
but it's it's pretty compact. It was the most compact one I could found, and with this kind of noise, you can be camping in the middle of nowhere and be safe that nobody is going to touch your bike. What else on this side? I always carry some extra straps from Turatec. They are always useful, either for my friend's luggage if something goes wrong, either for me if something goes wrong on the luggage. Two one meter and twenty ones and two small ones if I need just to, I don't know, uh, to, to strap something and extra, extra strap. They make me feel comfortable on the trips. I always, always use at least a pair of them. What else in this side? This is my tools kit. I used to have the, I used to have and to use the KTM original one. That is this piece of gear and this one. But this is not good. For me, this is not good. First, because there is no, no magnetic between the points and, and this tool. So it has some little, this little ball in here that it's supposed to fix, but it doesn't fix a lot. So it can happen that you are working and this falls on, on a water, on a river, in the middle of the sand. You can't find it anymore. So I, I don't like this piece of gear. Apart from that, in, in this set, it doesn't come the 13 uh, wrench to oil changes. So I just bought this from Norauto. It's an European French brand with a lot of shops everywhere. It's a big chain. They have everything uh, in here from 13 to five. The tool is just this piece of gear, well engineered, very lightweight. It's also nice that when you are working, you see the number of the of the of the of the points of the kits. So you just don't need to be like searching on a bag and trying which one is it. You already know the numbers. It's a bit more bulky, I know it is, than this. But on another hand, I can have everything in here. And in here, I need to have this and the 13 one. Uh, and some more. So in here I have everything. I'm happy with this. It's a small kit. It's cheap. It costs you 20 euros in Moralto. And I can dismount my entire bike with that. This is an air pump from Specialized. The most ultra lightweight I could find but still being an ice pump. I mean, if I have to inflate my tire, I don't need to be one hour inflating because this thing has a lot of power. It closes on the valve in here, just twisting this. And it's a nice piece of gear, quite ultra light. What else? Uh, this is the metal, um, like, uh, how do you say? that well that thing that you melt and becomes like a, almost it's not liquid metal but it's like a metal that you can like chewing gum and you can place on a clutch or on an engine or whatever or on a, a lever somewhere that you broke uh, it's always useful to carry this along then spark plug the spark plug for the 500 is quite long. It was difficult for me to find a case where it could fit. And even though I had to drill, let me show you, I, have, I had to drill a bit inside so that it could, uh, it could fit in here, okay? The Aceris uh, caps, for instance, the yellow ones, can't uh, cope with uh, with a spark plug for, for the 500. It can fit. It's it's just too long. What else? Ah, this is a chain, like it's a manual chain, like the same ones that are used in a chainsaw in an electric chainsaw. 
but with two hands. So if you find a tree in the middle of your way, you don't have to go all along. It's just and you cut the tree. It's amazing how efficient this little thing is. It weights nothing. The volume is really uh, tiny. And we had to cut some things already. And it's incredible, like in, in I wouldn't say seconds, but in, in minutes, in really uh, minutes, you can cut an entire tree with this. It's really useful. The brand is Robbins. Robbins or Provence, I don't know. I found this uh, randomly by luck uh, on a camping shop near mine here in the neighborhood. An amazing piece of gear. It was used for already more than once. Then the tire repair kit, because I use Tubeless, I like Tubeless. So this is the tire repair kit. Okay. It is a certain amount of volume. I would prefer not to carry this, but it's just the only way that you have to keep going having toolies. I can't use mousse because I can't use mousse because the the bike gets stored somewhere and the mousse would go just uh, flat. So ah, and this is if you need to. Uh, tow someone or someone has, has to tow you or whatever so and again in here the same situation okay just the same situation as uh, on the other pouches I use like 30% of spare space okay so if you do just one roll you'll be using 100% Okay, let me show you by the side. This would be like 100%. I use this with four or five ro rolls. So I always prefer to have spare space. Makes your life easier when traveling. You don't go upset or without patience every time you have to get some piece of gear. Now on this side, on this side we have a Leatherman, essential piece of gear for travel. I wouldn't travel without this anymore. Just amazing, good quality. Then I have the Koyega tool roll. Okay, it fits perfect in this pouch. Before buying this, I asked Rowell, the guy that uh, I was in contact with in, uh, in Moscow from the Netherlands. I asked him if he knew by any chance, if the Koryega roll would fit in there. And he said, yes. So it's good that you're buying a thing to a brand where people uh, know what exists on the market. Even, even though not being the, the Moscow 2 roll, maybe I would, I would buy the Moscow 2 roll now, but I already, I already had this before. But the guys honestly said, yes, uh, you, can, you can place a Koryega on our on our bags because it fit. So yeah, nice feedback. Well, I'm not going deep into what I have in here. It's just the essentials to do everything on the bike. And I think that in this side is everything. I ah, know. Yeah, I, I took the, the Moscow Moto compact adventure lock the first time this trip. I didn't use it, but I plan to use on next trips. So, nice piece of gear. And that's it, the, the unpacking of the Moscow Moto. What else can I tell you about that? Well, this, this beaver tail system, this tail system has a lot of configurations. Uh, I'm happy with uh, 
with the, let's say, stock system that they send, the Stinger 8 with the beaver tail, and it just fills my needs, totally happy with that. This is really easy to place. I think that there's not, not even the need to make a video about installing this, because this is just so easy, it's just uh, drilling a hole in here, placing the clit, and that's it. Uh, it couldn't be easier. On this side, I made uh, a little cut here on the plastic fender, on the plastic protection, okay? So I wouldn't pass, I think that in here would be too high for me. In here would be too low and probably messing with the boots uh, or the brake system. So I just cut it a bit over there and it passed along here. I was a bit afraid that it could melt with the exhaust at the beginning. It's not so far from there, but not a problem at all. Really not a problem at all. About the stack packs, I can still use them even though with without the same freedom. I mean, I, I used to use them until the far end of the rubber, and now I just use them on the first part of the rubber. And uh, Moscomoto does the, does the rest. I mean, it, it acts like a stack packs also. I would prefer just the stack packs without having this touching my boot. I can do it. It's just a question of placing this a bit further to the back losing this strap a bit more and I will reach these five centimeters that is missing here and I could use totally the stack packs. But as we were uh, carrying a bit a lot of weight in there with the bottle wines and all the food, I just prefer to place this safely more to the front so that it wouldn't uh, damage my, my rear tail. What else can I tell you? The blinkers are dead. This is a bit of piece of shit blinkers anyway. At the front, just the same thing. I think I'm buying those uh, LED systems from Takumoto, or maybe the ones on the on the hand guards from what is it Tusk uh, Moto Mining? I can't remember. The only thing is that I don't need another hand guard. I'm happy with these ones. Uh, I'm afraid also with my kind of riding with all the rocks and trees and falling when you're doing trials that I may, I may damage the, the headlight in here. So this solution from Takumoto seems nice. Uh, what else can I tell you about this? This is a Michelin Enduro Medium, lovely tire for these kind of things. It wears a lot, of course, it lasts, I don't know, 1000, 1500 kilometers, not more than that. But for the moment it's what I'm using. Uh, the Michelin 9100 at the front, same Enduro Medium. And that's it. Ah, let me talk to you about my tank bag in here. Okay, this is where I take all my all my audiovisual stuff. Again, I'm not a pro, okay? I'm not a filmmaker. I just like to make at least some nice videos or the nicest that I can so that I can have some good memories we can see the videos among friends that's just the idea it's not uh, it's not being a, a professional guy about this so what do I have in here this is the Let me place this way. Maybe it's better this way. Okay. So this is a tripod from GoPro. Very, very reliable. Very... Uh, you can use this in a lot of situations. It's very, it's very nice. 
as a pole stick or with a tripod, you can put it in a river, it's very strong, it can cope a bit of water um, resistance, it's nice. Then this is the mini, the mini one, like when I'm uh, filming myself, it takes also like a, like a tripod and I have this piece of gear here to adapt the GoPro system to the camera that I'm filming with. It's a Sony 6400. Then a head strap, GoPro head strap, GoPro 6 that my buddy was using on his helmet, GoPro 360 that I was using on my helmet, the system for my helmet. This is some accessories like a controller, remote controller for the camera, works nice. Uh, some lens protection for the for the GoPro. This is a light for the GoPro to film by night. Well, some extra things that I have in here. What else? The remote controller of the of the drone that I use with this to put in here while I'm riding. Okay, well, I, I'm not controlling while I'm riding, but it goes standing while I'm riding. It's always a pain in the ass to, to use those automatic, uh, those automatic uh, drive uh, fly modes with a the drone. They, they don't work very well, but well, we try the best. So I use this drone, this is the Mavic Air 1. There's already out the Mavic Air 2. This is still the Mavic Air 1. I use this GoPro little bag where it fits perfect with two batteries. So one battery in the drone, two batteries is more than enough for a day or a couple of days. Um, spare pro propellers in here, because I damage the propellers a lot over trees and things like that. This is the bag for the microphone that I'm using right now. It's the Rode Wireless Go system. Very nice. It can cope a lot of wind when you place this uh, cat cap. You can, you can record. This doesn't work very well. This, this, this weight fixed to the, to the micro, so you need to have uh, an extra rubber. But the sound comes great when you are in windy places. And this is the bag for the camera. And that's it. I think it's everything now. This is my setup. I'm happy with it. As I said, the only thing that I might just change is probably uh, some, uh, well, installing some Baja Works. For, in, in fact, it's still in here since I bought the bike, this Baja Works mini fairing uh, made in use. Uh, this is a pain in the ass for, uh, for we living in Europe. We are buying made in use uh, things and we pay a lot in border taxes when they arrive here. And you have to fill a dozen of papers. It seems that you are carrying drugs. It's just, yeah. The inquiry about that thing is, is, is endless. It's just a pain in the ass, but what can we do? You guys in America have a lot of uh, nice stuff that we don't have here. So I need to order things from America. It's like this, the double take mirror. We don't have this in Europe. It's another thing that I can't really understand, uh, but I couldn't. I couldn't find this in Europe, I had to order from America. Uh, it's a lovely piece of gear, it works perfectly well. You just put it down when you're not using. It's just doing like this, it goes down, it goes up, it never breaks, it's always on this place. So I'm really happy with the system. You can move it in one hand, you can, you can move it while you're riding without needing to stop. Uh, I still use this 
original one uh, system in here for the lights I was about to buy the CKS one that seems more comfortable for the blinkers and things like that but I heard guys saying that it's not so reliable and for me reliability is just above everything so I just kept the original one not so comfortable it's a bit hard in here but well it's not the main thing uh, doing the blinkers so it works well it's neat it's small it's just going to keep in here for a lot of time and that's it I think it's almost more or less everything about the baby here so this is all the well not the dog the dog is not going with me apart from that this is all the gear that I take uh, and I and I'm carrying this this backpack with the hydration system with uh, how do you say the the sleeves of the indoor jacket this is a this is a 270 Pro Backpack S. This is a pole that extends until 270. I mean, uh, how is it? Well, let's let's say 270 centimeters. It's two meters and 70 centimeters that it extends. It's incredible. It gives nice perspectives. It seems that you are filming with a with a drone. What else do I carry in here? I carry... Is it honey? Is it honey? What else do I carry in here? I carry... The last layer when it's running. Uh, Gore-Tex uh, exterior layer. And a pair of extra gloves. Totally happy with this Gore bike wear. This costs like 60 or 70 euros, not more. And it has better results than some 200 or 250 gloves from Revit or from Alpine Stars or whatever. This is bike gear and it works really good. It has wind stopper. You don't boil your hands when it's warm but you don't freeze your hands when it's cold also well if it's really freezing if it's snow you're going to freeze them but if it's just chilly it's really nice it's my spare pair of gloves now i ordered from takomoto some ame grip uh, lock grip heated grips i'm really curious to know about that because it was difficult for me to find lock grips with heated system because those ones from Oxford, they are just very bulky. I don't like the, the feeling, I like the thin feeling. And there are these thin um, uh, metal circuits that you can place under the grip, but not on lock on grips. You can do it all only on regular grips. And once you get used to lock on grips, it's just amazing. It's just, a, there's never more that thing of the grip rolling, placing irons, placing glue, whatever things that fail over the time. So, uh, Mike Spurgeon just gave me that suggestion. Thank you for that. It's called AME uh, Lock on Grips. I'm waiting for them to arrive. Let's see how it goes. And that's it. This is my setup. This is all the things that I carry. It's funny that when we camp on campsites, uh, on camping resorts, when people see our tents and all the gear that we have, the share and cooking with stove and everything, people come to us asking, do you carry all that on those tiny little bikes with those tiny little luggages? And I say, we say, yeah, we carry all this. So, yeah, things just developed a lot over the last years. Big thumbs up for the Moscow system. Big thumbs up for the bike. 
I had three or four GSs before this one. Uh, I never had so much fun traveling. I had the 690 KTM also with a tower on the front, but I never had so much fun riding and traveling as I get from this 500. I hope this video was useful for you. Maybe a bit too long. I'm not even editing, I think. Uh, but well, there's a lot of information that I hope it was useful for you guys. Cheers.